session of twisted tales it's your co-host and it's your boy babe aka mojo and i'm sitting with desi dez in the desi building dez. and today we got a special guest in the building. special special guest in the building okay latrell aka red zone bonner okay mm. red zone bonner. <laughs> somebody that got the, yes, sir. Like everything big, together like huh? big play shape yes, red sir. zone bonner okay now before we get into that nickname and everything uh go ahead and talk to the people and you know let them know who you are sir I'm with Trevor Bond. I'm from Buffalo, Illinois. I play football, and I'm uh, that's what I love to do, you know. Mm, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, where did it where did it come in? You know what I'm saying? Coming from O'Fallon, Illinois, where did it come in to playing football? Like, what was it like growing up out there in O'Fallon? It's been nothing but the best. I've been playing since I was five, so, and I've been winning, man. I just love to do it. So, I just carried on, and it's been successful for me. Okay. Okay. Now you play both sides of the field, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Before we get into all that, now are you an only child? No, sir. No, sir. How many siblings you got? I got two. I got an older brother. I got a younger brother and a younger sister. Okay, okay. Did so. your older uh, brother play football? Yes, he does. He okay. still do or what? He stopped playing when he went to college. But he played in high school from five to senior year as well. And my younger brother. He played, my sister played basketball and stuff like that. So we are athletes around the family. Okay. Okay. So that kind of somewhat where the football comes from with you then? Right. Yes, sir. We all just put born into it and we just, we just kept it going. Mm. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So moving forward, we're going to go ahead and get into everything because your football, I mean, I looked at your resume. I was like, man, I, you know, I looked at a couple of players like, hey, this dude here, man, where they find this guy at? And I'm a Steelers fan, as you can see. And we tend to take receivers. Say, we need you. We, to, <laughs> hey, we need you. Listen, I want you to know you got a high chance of getting drafted by my Steelers. Don't let nobody else tell you nothing otherwise. My Steelers <laughs> drafted damn near every single player from here. We yeah. took, reserve. we took Craig out. We was going to take Craig out with him. We mm -hmm. took both the players from East Side, Jason mm -hmm. Ford and some more. So we tend to take players Terry from this Hawthorne. area. Yes, sir. Terry Hawthorne. We take um, players from this area. No doubt about yeah, that. Right. Right, right. You know, look out for that. And it's always, I tell people all the time, man, it's always at least a bar minimal. I watch every draft every year all the way down to the last round in the supplemental draft. It's usually about 30 to 40 receivers that go every year. Dang, or at least 30 receivers that go. So who do you got a high chance to get in there? Who do you model your game after? Uh, Dan Hopkins. That's all, that's all I like a receiver. Mm. And that corner, I just, I'm just a dog, so I get out there and just lock up. I don't got no, no model role model corner. I'm just out there. Mm. So, do you consider yourself a possession receiver, or do you consider yourself a wide? You know, like a give me the ball, throw it up. I got. Yeah, it. I'm, just, I'm a go getter. I don't want to be no possession receiver. I do everything. Okay, they Julio type stuff. There we go. Right. Yes, sir. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You ain't got to call me, so sir. Give, give me the difference between um, Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins in your, you know, from your perspective. Thanks. I feel like DeAndre Hopkins is going to catch the ball wherever you get it, and he's just going to get the job. Now, Julio, he's going deep at a time with it. He's going, mm -hmm. he, that, he that, that go ball type of dude, you know? He bank off his speed mostly. Right, yes, sir. And Julio, he, Julio, he, he's, he's the fast guy. DeAndre Hopkins, he's got have speed. He, he, get, he gets the ball, you know, catch it, open at night. So that's what I like. Mm. I heard through the grapevine through Myra that you like, you said your favorite route was the post route. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You still feel that way? <laughs> okay. Okay. Talk to me. Why is the post route your favorite route? Because I feel like you ain't got to do too much, but it's, you, you can still throw a little sauce in. Like, you got that one cut, mm -hmm. get what you got to go and get up the field. And it's a deep ball at the same time. Do you chop when you get to the... <sighs> yeah, got to give it to him. Got to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I hear a lot of um, I hear a lot of receivers say not Julio and them or nothing like that. But I've heard a lot of younger receivers, especially over the last few years, they say their favorite route is the slant because they can get the ball mm -hmm. in their hands and then they can take off upfield or they can still mm -hmm. split the going saying going across the middle. So, right, right. but that's what's up though. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Somebody get a bead on that slant, boy. You can get slant. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> now, um, going into some of your numbers, because like I said, you have had some impressive numbers, but I'm going to just go off your last year. Your last year, you had 29 receptions, 386 yards, three touchdowns. 
Now, to the naked eye, that might sound like something. What people don't know is in week eight, you had six catches for 92 yards and a 26-yard touchdown to open up the second half. So when you're talking about stuff like that, you like you said, explosion, and I'm pretty sure that's where the red zone bonner come from because it seems like you was a red zone hunter once they gave you the chance to get in it. My question is, did they start you off on offense or defense? Because in your defensive plan, you had 29 collective tackles and two interceptions last year as well as a DB. So what was the transition? Did they start you off on offense or did you start off on defense and make the transition? What was that like? I started on offense and then mm. throughout the year, I just grazed more to defense. And I've always played defense as a kid and growing up, but where I'm from, it's not it's not hard to play both sides of the ball the whole game. So they were they were slow to put me in and let me play both sides, which is why my numbers on the offensive side of the ball were really where I wanted them, even though people was hyped up. But, you know, I just... I, I let the game come to me, and when they when they, they not play both sides of the ball, like this year, I'll be playing both sides the whole game. So I prepared for it, but I started that receiver and then went to defense and kept going after that. Now, did you play DB or did you play safety? I played DB. Hey, this your boy Desi Des. And it's your boy Mojo. And if you like what you are seeing so far, make I sure you, you like, it. comment, and subscribe to the page. Please. And if all else fails and you like what you're talking about as far as this merch-wise, baby, hit us up. You know what I'm saying? Check us out on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook at Twisty Youngins with a Z. You know what I'm talking about? Make sure you give us an email mm -hmm. at twistyyoungins at gmail.com for all promotions. Where is it at? At twistyyoungins at gmail.com? Yes, sir, with a Z. And also, if y'all don't like what you see right now as far as merch-wise, we yeah. got more merch and we also do your yeah, merch. Do your merch, Send too. Us in a we couple support designs. everybody. Yeah, and we do promotional packages, interviews, videos, articles, whatever you guys need, man. Just Thank make you. sure you hit us up. I let you, baby. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And that helps you uh, being a wide out too, huh? It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at some of the best, like Deion Sanders and stuff yeah. like that, people who actually did play both sides of the field, but not just play it, they played it to a high level. Mm -hmm. You can see, like, Deion Sanders, in his mind, only, obviously, he's the greatest DB. I mean, first of all, Deion's one of the greatest athletes ever, you know, baseball. Yeah. Yeah. But – on both sides of the ball, even when he played receiver, when he was playing with the Cowboys, like he looked at like he was a seasoned vet. Like yeah. he knew how to run <laughs> he, routes. Cause he knew the route tree. Yeah, he knew the route yeah. tree better than majority of the receivers. Yeah. So he was out there, he yeah. looked like he had been doing this. So you're absolutely yeah. right. I think it does help. And um, like I said, 29 collected tackles. And plus he got that me. speed, man. So they gonna bag up yeah. 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 Him anyway. Yeah. Somebody now, got a four two. Yeah, oh. now they told me that, you know, you was locking stuff down. And at some points, you know, there would be many, many a moons and pluck a couple of games where they would not even throw the ball your way. How was that being a DB and not getting the ball thrown your way? It was kind of frustrating because I see my teammates getting chance for interceptions and they get a pick six or whatnot. And it's like, I'll do the same thing, but I don't get the opportunity because I ain't throwing the ball my way. So it's a team game. So I'm doing my job of locking my man up. And it's kind of frustrating, but you got to do what you got to do to help the team win. Man, start doing those yawning emojis. Oh, well, no, no, I ain't, I ain't, ain't going to say that. Um, uh, my, <laughs> you let them know you, you, you know, you tired of Y'all wasting my time. Yeah, yeah you wasting my time. The Reavers Island stuff. Yeah. But, um, in that process, though, I do want to ask, because, you know, you are in college now, right? I'm a, I'm a senior in high school right now. Senior in high school. But yeah. you have committed already, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So before we get into your committing all that. So talk to me about how hard is it? to have an impact on the game? Like, do you look for other ways to impact the game when they're not throwing you the ball, or do you just stay in pack and stay your position and guard your man or play your zone and just wait to see if anything come to you? Yes, sir. I feel like I, I, I go all out, you know. If I'm not affecting the team or helping the team out on offense, I say, quick, I want to go to defense, and I want to do what I got to do to, to make a make an impact, you know. So I'm going to go out my way to do something special and make myself known on the, on the field. Okay, okay. Ain't nothing wrong should. with that at all. Now, um, you did um, kick return as well, right? Yes, sir. Now, I do want to get into something very interesting that I will learn. Because um, I watched the Lakers. I'm a Lakers fan. But Anthony Davis, being from Chicago and in Illinois, everybody knows he started off as a point guard. Then he right. grew and ended up being 16 one summer. Mm -hmm. And then he got to come back and play power forward. From what I was told, they said you grew five inches between your sophomore and junior year. That's correct? Uh, about five inches. Yeah, my freshman year is where I really, my freshman to uh, sophomore year is where I really stretched out, and then my junior, just, uh, my junior, year, I just, I just kept going. Mm -hmm. So it's really like it was like five, six inches in the, the midst of two years. Okay. Now, I, did that did that impact your game at all, or any? 
Uh, definitely, because, you know, at first it was just more of a speed kills type, get the ball, running bubble routes. But when you expand, you can go to the outside of the slot and, you know what I'm saying, do everything, go up to the jump balls. So I just, I feel like it made me that much more of a player now that I was taller and could be with the bigger guys. What's your 40? I run a 4'5". Four, 4'5", four, five. Okay. Four, five, okay. And how tall are you? 6'2". 6'3", in my, in, my, in my uniform and stuff like that. Okay. That's what's up. So, oh, hey, yeah. look, that's nice, hey. for real. Huh? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, yeah, them some nice numbers, man. Mm-hmm. I gotta give you that. Um, take me into the process of getting ready for a game. Cause a lot of people have their own type of regimens and everything, but I know for a wide receiver, especially in today's day and age, knowing that it ain't like it used to be, you're gonna get targeted. Like if right. especially if you out there yeah. and you're a number one or a number two, if you anywhere from the one to the three, you will be targeted at least three times throughout a game, majority rules. So talk to me about the preparation of getting ready for a game and getting your mindset into the fact that either you're going to get a lot of balls or you're not, and you're going to have to find another way of impacting the game as far as blocking and stuff like that. How I get ready is just, like I said, in pregame and stuff like that, we just, we, we all, we do one-on-one stuff like that. I want to have two guys on me. So I just, I gotta, I gotta go on my way to, to show what I can do. And so my quarterback trusts me and do all that. So Basically, I go out my way to, to, to practice and put in 110% so when the game comes, it's, it's all easy. Yeah, the quarterback should be your best friend, huh? What's up, bro? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the quarterback yeah, relationship, yeah. It, I mean, it has to be hey. some sort of relationship because um, obviously if you look at some of the greatest, like even Tom Brady right now, and mm-hmm. you look at the chemistry, when they say it's hard for him in the first beginning of the season, he was throwing picks and stuff. He was yeah. off. They missing time counts and stuff. You know, yeah. there's no chemistry there. They haven't trained no OTAs. They just starting out. But Tom's the kind of quarterback where he need to practice with you. I need reps in. Yeah, with you, you. want to kick it with me? Meet me on the field. Yeah, yeah. You want to hang out? We yeah. can hang out on the beach no while problem. we throw this ball around. Mm-hmm. So my question for you, are you that kind of receiver? Like, are you trying to get reps in with your quarterback? And if you are trying to get him in, do you just look to get him in with the starter? Or are you one of those person where I want reps with everybody? Because anybody could get in at any moment. I'm definitely the type of guy, you know, I want to I wanna get reps in. Like when coronavirus came, we couldn't go on the field. We went to the parking place, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we put in extra reps and whatnot. And, I will go out there with anybody. You know, I like my quarterback, obviously first, but like I said, it's a little brother to back up, so I'll be out there with the backup too, just putting that yeah. work. Backup, yeah, because he he need the work, so yeah. Every yeah. time you see him. <laughs> no doubt about that. No doubt about that. We're going to get into a lot of stuff today, man. But listen, you got, um, you're coming up in the, um, going into college and whatnot, and you're going to have a lot of scouts paying attention to you. So I'm going to give you a question real quick, and I want to see what you got for me. If they give, they double teaming you, what is the hardest route to run under that double team? I'm doing double team the hardest route to run. Double yeah. team if it's the it, corner, it if it's the corner, if the yeah. corner on man and the safety coming over the top, what's the hardest route for you to run in that moment? Slap. Mm. Why you say that? I feel like with the slap, if you beat the corner off the ball, the safety's still coming downhill. But if you, you know what I'm saying, any other route, you're going deep, you beat the corner, and then it's if you were the safety one on one, you go in the post. Get the corner safety one on one, but you gotta wait for the ball to slant. So I feel like coming down here, the safety gonna knock, knock your head off. Absolutely. Hey, you like Megatron out there? Like, how big is these corners you going up against? I'm normally bigger than my corners. Corners normally come like five ten, that, that range. Yeah. So I mean, you a, you a freak athlete out there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, Sherman was the last. I ain't gonna say the last, but yeah, Sherman was the last six foot corner that I believe was out here doing damage for excess of five plus years. Like you got okay. Stephen Gilmore and stuff like that, but. Hold up, Reeves, you gonna disrespect Reeves? Reeves one six two. Yeah, how tall was he? I believe five, Reeves about 5'11 or something oh, like man. that. Six, six feet and better. Hold corners, up, Chad right? Bailey. I'm saying lately. Come on, okay. work with me. All right, um, moving change. on, like, like I said, moving on though. You did commit, right? Southeast yeah. Missouri State. Right, yes sir. Now, they told me you had offers from Murray State, UT Martin, you know, and then they said you visited with Miami and a whole bunch of a list of other schools. The U, baby. State, yeah. Tennessee Martin. Um, what made Eastern Illinois, where Tony Romo came from, what made you pick Southeast Missouri? Uh, it was just, you know what I'm saying, like, out of all the schools, they showed the most love. I felt like I was like I was at home there. I mm-hmm. felt wanted there. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell me. I felt wanted there, so you know I feel like 
I feel like it was at home and it was the best fit for me. You know what I'm saying? So if uh say if football don't work out, what are you going to school for? Uh business and secondary education. Mm. So I can coach or uh, run my own business. Okay, what kind of business do you think you run? Uh I haven't thought too much about that, but I know I'm gonna I'm gonna do okay. something for Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Now you made your big commitment on YouTube and everything. Talk to me about how YouTube has helped so many athletes propel themselves to the top of the list. Cause that's um, really what the game is right now. Like you, I've seen a lot of players where I be looking at them. I be like, man, they game basic, but they got the follow. So people are like, oh, that boy got next easily. That boy got next. You know what I'm saying? It's entertainment so, now. So yeah, no doubt about it. Talk to me about that process or what that is. If that frustrates you at all, I feel like it does because you know before, I got I got a, 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 a few followers now. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say too much, but I feel like before that I see guys with a lot of followers and they get all hyped up and they they really overrated. So I feel like the truth gonna come out when the past come on. You gotta go to a camp. You gotta see me. So. Yeah. All the hype is, is cool while you got it, but you still got to come across me before you can make it to the next level or do what you got to do, you know? Absolutely. Now, you now my question for you is, being a wide receiver and being a DV, I'm going to ask you as a wide receiver, and then I'm going to ask you the same. I'm going to ask you to answer this question as a DV as well. But as a receiver, what kind of quarterback are you looking for? Are you looking for a quarterback that's going to focus on you and try to come out? Well, I ain't even going to say just quarterback, coordinator, all that. Are you looking at some uh, offense that's going to focus on you coming out, or are you looking at an offense that's intended to spread the ball and get it to the next man up, give it to the right person or the right receiver or whoever's open? Uh, as a team aspect, I'm looking for a quarterback that's going to gonna look at everybody. But I just know that once I put the work in and get the representative with the quarterback, He's gonna have a connection where he trusts me more than anybody else on the field. So he's gonna give me the ball. So I'm not worried about the quarterback only focusing on me. I want him to be able to throw the ball to the other, to other guys too, but he knows where we stand with a connection fan base. Yeah. Hey, uh, give me your favorite team in the NFL right now. Uh, New England Patriots. New England Patriots? Mm. Now, New England is my team. It was my team. Beautiful. But when Tom left, I'm just like everybody, those LeBron friends. When Tom left, I leave. Now, I love Bill, and I do love Cam, but it's looking bad for you right now, huh? Do you see Man, I'm the opposite. I like Cam Newton. I like, okay. Okay, wherever Cam you go, Cam. that's who you follow. Yeah. I, I, I like Cam, too. Yeah, um, like do you see Cam. a future, though, even though with his late struggles? Do you see a future with Cam in New England? Or do you think he's going to hit the free agency next year and hit, you know what I'm saying, try to find somewhere else? I see a future in New England. I feel like Cam got turned around. He's a hard worker. Yeah. Where he can do anything. And the fact that Bill came and, you know, tapped his head and stuff, they let him know that, like, hey, I got your back. I ain't, you know, I, I didn't buy the right groceries. <laughs> I didn't bring no harvest. He was there for you. I mean, listen, Tom you know? Brady has been making gourmet steaks out of salad for the last 10 years. So yeah. the truth is finally out. But, yeah, that's what's up, man. Ain't nothing wrong with All that. Right with the team. What, um... Coming up throughout high school and everything, what was your toughest aspect of trying to get down the fun fundamentals, I should say, of being a wide receiver? Because a lot of people just think it's just going out and running routes and everything. No, I, actually, I think it's a mentality because you have to have a strong mentality to be a receiver because you have to have a mental IQ for the game as a receiver right. to last. You I was know? just going to say that. Yeah. I feel like it's all, it's all mental almost, you know, like when the ball go on the air, Every receiver gonna drop the ball, but it's like how you gonna come back from it? You gonna you gonna have it have it in your head all, all game that you you messed up and you ain't gonna come back from it. You gonna mm -hmm. next you gonna catch and gonna score. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel like it's all mental. That's the, that's the biggest thing you gotta get over. Uh, I wanna know, are you single, sir? <laughs> oh, snaps. Oh, <laughs> no, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. There you go. There you Is she go. going to the same school you going to? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, keep that love mm. alive, man. Keep that love. No, alive. sir. So, is, you, is that strong to where, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be out here for about three, four years. I'm not gonna do nothing. I'm just uh, assume, and, and then hopefully, I know for sure that you're not gonna do nothing, and we're gonna be together after this over. So, is that what's going on or what? But uh, I'm not thinking about that. I'm 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 here to play ball. So I'm just okay. So you're not thinking about that. So therefore, you know, you're gonna be out there killing, brother. 
You know, and then women, you know, they 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 love to see a brother out there killing. I mean, listen, looking good. I mean, listen, man, in, in your point, in your point of view, and in, in your position, I ain't gonna say in your position from my point of view, only thing I can tell you and only thing I will tell you about moving forward in life is that you lose women. I mean, you lose money chasing women, but you don't lose women chasing money. A quote from Nas, I forget what song it was, but uh-huh. trust me, that's a that's a fact and that's a truth. And just know, no means no, brother. You know, oh, no I, means no. I ain't gonna say no means. Get no. set up when you get that's, up there. That's, sometimes that's, they try to set you up. Yeah, that's oh, a and fact. we gonna keep it. You gonna keep it a hundred on. You know, yeah, sometimes they fact. try to set you up. No means no. Even if you in it, you stroking. She say no. Pull out and get up out of there. Listen, man. <laughs> if all I can For say real. is, go Drake. You don't know what that mean. Dig it up. Go Drake. Just come out with them contracts. Listen, you said you you, you, <laughs> see, uh, you said this was good. But like, <laughs> make sure you got it in writing. But um, let's talk about something else. So one of my favorite receivers, and I think the greatest receiver of all time, Randy Moss. So Randy Moss said when he was a wide receiver, how he would measure coming off the line. Doesn't matter what route he's running. Coming off the line is totally different from running his routes. It all depends on how his route going to come out. Depends on how he gets off the line. If you get a good start or if he gets a bad one, that can mess up the transition and the chemistry with the quarterback. So he said he would always look at the DB's body language to try to figure out what he needs to do. Oh, if he's pointing, you know, if his hips is pointed inward, then he's going to use his hands and try to make him get physical because he's not balanced enough to get physical. He can knock him off his balance. Or if he's flat, then he's going to try to, you know, do some footwork and get fancy with him and try to get off of that. How do you go into you, you know, going into your situation and how do you go into your reps and whatnot? I feel, I I relate the same way. I feel like the corner, like his body language and what he's doing, he lets you know which how you gonna run your route, whether you going inside or outside, or how you gonna stack them. So, and the same thing at the corner, the way the receiver sets up, it, it tells you a lot. You know, if you going inside or outside, or you should press with this hand or that hand. So, mm-hmm. the same way, it's all it's all it's all in the, in the technique and, and how you look at it. Hey, as a corner, you like putting your hands on them. Yes, I like I like to I like to get nasty. It, it throw those okay. little, look, it throw those little skinny fast drive receivers off the point. <laughs> Cause you could just hold them. And he's six two big and fast. What yeah. you what, what do you do you like do you like um do you feel better? Do you feel more comfortable in the man or the zone? I like man. Yeah. Okay. Ed, every corner love that man. I mean every corner love the man, but I know a lot of corners nowadays when they get to the NFL, most of them college corners, they be playing zone because they like, oh, I can sit her wait for him to get the ball. I could cut him off and all of this so I could get the big hit or whatever. And majority of the time they get burnt trying to do all that. Trust me, I know I'm a still. Especially if you got a trash uh, yeah. a safety. Oh yeah, listen, Minka Fitzpatrick cover up <laughs> a lot for cold. us back there. But listen, Joe Hayden be getting smoked back there. I be like, Lord, help us. Jesus, help this man. And it's cause he's in zone. Like, he's, but he's older now. So, you know, that's a transition. Yeah, cause you have he, was to make. he was when cold. When you, um, when you get to college next year, are you looking to just play full time wide receiver, or are you looking to still play both sides of the ball? Um, I commit to play wide receiver, but I want to do everything. Man. I'm just a football player. I want to return kicks, return punts. Mm-hmm. And, so. I was yeah. just gonna get to that. I was just gonna say, if your coach come to you and say, "Look, I'm gonna have you do this punt return or this kick return," is you cool with that? We already talked about that, yes sir. I'm yeah. returning kicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it, man. Listen, I think the best way to be is to, like you said, give it your all. The only thing, um, like Dan Orlovsky said the other day, man, if you leave the field and you know you didn't give your 100% physically and mentally, that's going to eat you alive. Because that's how you know, you know, doesn't matter what everybody else did. If you know you didn't give your all when you leave that field and y'all take a loss, it's going to hurt more than anything. Right. You can deal hey. with a loss of your teammates not handling their job, but you know you went out there, you balled, you went as hard as you could, and you know I left it all out there on the table. But if right. you give it your all, then you know if there's a reasonable doubt, it could get it could get slimy out there for somebody, especially wide receivers, because you know they give you guys the diva, you know personalities and whatnot. Oh, he want the ball. He want to show up in the fresh Nikes or whatever, show up with Jordans and go out there and get two catches for one touchdown and, you know, be looking for 17 million a year. But ain't nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it. Um, Right now, I know you said uh, Julio Jones. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, not Julio Jones. DeAndre Hopkins, your favorite receiver right now. Who's your favorite receiver of all time? Uh, Randy Moss. Okay. Randy, that boy. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I tell people all Randy's the time, I love boy. Jerry Rice to death. No, do no doubt the numbers speak for themselves, but I tell people all the time, same thing like what now Kobe. he probably was better technically. 
Yeah, I mean, he, yes. Running routes, he probably was a no, little he better. Was a better. He was yeah, a better route runner was. and all of that, yeah. but you know, Randy never had the afford it. You know, Randy was never gifted yeah. the jewels that you know. But yeah. The Jerry, Jerry had, had. Jerry had the greatest Joe quarterback Montana of all time. Steve Young. Yeah. yeah, two of them. Yeah. Two Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Randy Moss only played with one in his whole life. And that was yeah. for what? How many long was we with y'all? Two years? Two years, two. Two yeah, years with the Patriots. Like yeah. <laughs> Other than that, he been Broke in Oakland, Bradley. Tennessee. Passes. And as much as I love Dante Culpepper, that was my guy. I love yeah. him to death. But he was no Hall of I ain't going to say he was no Hall of Fame, but he didn't make it to the Hall of Fame. He's not a Hall of Fame quarterback. And plus, he was the most dominant player on the video game. Randy? Yeah. I mean, no. Nah, I mean, I call I'm throwing Randy the deep Moss. every time. Yeah. Uh. I, I want you to know, literally, I call Randy Moss the greatest wide receiver ever for one thing and one thing only. When they What's play that? baseball, you just saw the World Series. Dodgers won the World Series. Shout out to the Dodgers. Now, you just saw the World Series. When they hit a baseball and they hit a home run and it looked like it's going to go over the fence for about 350 yards, and then you see the outfielder go run up and catch that ball before it goes over that mug, before it goes over the fence, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? He just mouse that. He mossed it. Oh, he, just, he just mossed that. that yeah. People yeah. use moss as if it is a acronym, a noun, like they use it as an yeah. everyday verbiage and language. Like yeah. you can yeah. see somebody, you know what I'm saying? You could just be in the store and you see people do it in the store, make videos, just be walking down the aisle, they'll yeah. throw something in the urn, catch it over somebody's head, yeah. just randomly. Like, oh, he just mossed them, you know? <laughs> Same thing with the whole throwing stuff in the trash yeah. can, Kobe or stuff, whatever the case may be, stuff like that. So I feel like he was such an iconic person in that position going out on the field every day. I'm going to catch that himself. ball. Throw yeah. that ball up, Tom. Yeah, throw that ball up, Tom. You know, he comes <laughs> the mud. Yeah. Country is that thing, man. But I love Randy Moss. Shouts out to him. Um, Who do you see yourself as moving forward as a wide receiver? Who do you see yourself as? Like you said, I know you said DeAndre Hopkins, but let's exclude him. If you had to say you had this type of a makeup, what type of receiver? Yeah, what's your you build? Be? What's your build? Uh, I say Michael Thomas. Hmm. Oh, Michael Thomas. That's a good, because Mike, I mean, Michael Thomas gonna catch is, that ball. Yeah, I mean, you said right. your favorite route is the post route, but you know, even though, you know I'm saying, like you said, you like to get aggressive, you can run routes. And Michael Thomas is a route running deep threat, right. low key. Right. But people don't understand. Like he's kind of like Antonio Brown was like, where he can run every route, but when you catch him down the field, it look like he do this. How tall is that dude? I think Michael Thomas probably about six feet or 5'10". He ain't that tall. He ain't. Mm -mm. Okay. He respects his crap. That's what he does, and I like. That's what I do. I I, I run straight, Chris routes. You know what I'm saying? I, I, we got we got similar route running. Hey, uh, do me a favor, man. At practice, like, uh, like maybe later on in life, or you know, anytime, you got to make the coach kick you off the field. Like, meaning you you out there so long, man. He he, like he go in the office. Do paperwork, come back out, still see you on the field. Like, man, come on, it's time you to go on. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Just shows yeah. a commitment. You gotta, you gotta make him kick you off at least one or two times, so then he can tell that story, to, you know, to other. I'm coaches. not even. I'm right, not right. Even, <laughs> yeah. for real though. Like, I had to, man. Sometimes I had to get him off the field. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, for real. No, for real, man. I mean, you're absolutely yeah. right, man. You it's hear people time. talk about it all the time. How Kobe Bryant, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. even when he broke his wrist. He was up in uh, in his, you know, there's the famous picture of him shooting free throws in his mm -hmm. pajama with his other hand yeah. with the cast on, you know, four o'clock in the morning. They got a game later on that evening. He not even playing. Yeah. He just up shooting free throws. Yeah. And let not him know even you see it, but yeah. you ain't come out to play no games. So, yeah, yeah. You don't like right. losing. He's on the field. If he, if we lose, I don't have to tell him to come to practice. He's there uh, before I'm there. Now that's a, catching routes. That's a big thing, too. Um, media presence is a big thing. You know, yeah. when you come to the podium, you have to know how to speak. Because when you go to the podium, you know, y'all lose the game. Are you blaming everybody? Or are you doing the self-check first, then mm -hmm. looking at everybody else? Like, you know what? Yeah, I, I had a good game, but you know what? We just got to do better. You know, are you naming names or are you sticking with the team philosophy? You know, that's the better question. I'm sticking with the team. I got to. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when you get a, get a long quarterback, your trash had passed me the ball. I mean. Pass me. Yeah, you can say <laughs> in private. You can do what you, you know, talk nice to him. And, man, we all good. Is on. But when you get alone, there's nothing wrong with telling that quarterback, give me the ball. Stop trying to throw it to that weak old tight end. He not going <laughs> to catch it. He keep tipping the ball. keep getting intercepted. Give me the ball. Yeah, I mean, if you know your quarterback throwing sure. interceptions because you know he's throwing it to the wrong, I ain't going to say throwing it to the wrong person, but he's just not targeting you. Anybody other than you is the wrong person. Yeah. 
That's how Kobe felt. Yeah. Like, getting anybody else to ball with me, we gonna lose. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that philosophy mm-hmm. either, man. If you had to today, what would be the number one thing you would want to do for your team to progress? Like, restate that. What you mean? Like, so, what play that I want to make? Or- what would you have to do? Like, what right now? Say your team right now. What do you guys have to do? Basically, I'm sorry. Let me restate. Let me rephrase that. What do you guys have to do to win the state? Yeah. Well, I say we got to come together as a team first to start. Like I said, a team full of individuals is a losing team at the end of the day. So, mm-hmm. like, when we come together, and we trust each other, and all we got to do is play together and do do what we do, play our football. And we, we the sky's the limit, like I said. Hey, name me a couple of your players, man, that stick out, you know, that, that you should be on the lookout for. My quarterback, Tom Michael, my running back, Mason Blakemore, and then my receiver and pick partner in crown, Ian Wagner. Okay. Give me, give me the I also got a DZ. Oh, yeah. yeah and they already committed too, right? Yeah. He yeah. committed to Illinois State, yeah. Yeah. Okay. My DZ, I got my boy, my boy Vice Coley and Cyrus Davis, mm-hmm. my dogs. Okay. That's what's up, man. Listen, are you a leader in that locker room? Do you lead your troops where they need to be? When all the when all hell is breaking loose and y'all down by 14 at the end of the half and y'all not getting the ball back and coming out the break, they finna give up the ball again. You know what I'm saying? You gotta kick it off again. Are you in that locker room at halftime leading the soldiers or giving them advice on what they need to do or what y'all need to do as a team? Or are you sitting in there waiting around like everybody else wondering what the coach gonna do? I'm leading for sure. I feel like, you know, that's that's one of my jobs. That's my job to be as a starter, as a captain, senior. I got I gotta do that, you know. I gotta keep my boys head up and if I if I'm down, we all gonna be down, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. I'm leading the crew. I gotta I gotta be a leader. Okay, are you you are are you you know, tell me now, are you on the weed? No, sir. Nor should you be, okay. sir. Don't be like none of these don't, fools yeah. out here. Yeah. Don't don't waste yeah. your life. You got it. plenty of time. Trust yeah. me. When you get that thirty million in the bank, look at Antonio Brown and Le'Veon. That's when they did it. You know what I'm saying? Wait for <laughs> all that. Wait till you get the check. Wait till you get the check. <laughs> Wait till you get the check first. Uh, um, do you got people on your team that's on the weed? Keep it real. Uh, it's not pointing are. nobody out. Yeah, it's a, it's a few guys. Allegedly, we ain't gonna say no names. Allegedly, we gonna say. Allegedly, you know what I'm saying? Allegedly, there there could there could or could mm-hmm. not be. Okay, there could or could not be. We don't know for sure. We ain't gonna put no names. Is it there. coming to practice high? Ooh. No, nah, we smarter than that. We just, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And we, it's, those, those guys, they do out of season. They, okay. We keep the head on straight down the season, you know, school, P3 and all that. So we just, we, we, we play ball first thing, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you got going on after that, that's what Job, yeah, come job. on now, they ain't yeah. all professional. Now. There's some um, sh- showing up high in the uniform. You know that. Come on now. I hold them, I hold them to it. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say. Um, right yeah, I was just going to say. I mean, it's very rare in any sport, especially, I ain't going to say in any sport, but especially in the sport of football, it's very rare that a wide receiver is a team captain. You usually got to be the best player on the team as a wide receiver to be a team captain. He so. is. He on the offensive side of the ball. I, I mean, you on offense and too. defense. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's different. Sure. But with you being a team captain, talk to me about the struggles of being a team captain. Because like you said, you might see players out and about, you know what I'm saying, maybe smoking the weed or doing some crazy stuff that you know they probably finna go and get in the car with some dudes. They ain't got no business riding with. They parties, and, you know, how the, yeah. how the parties out there. I know you an old fella. Yeah, as the you team captain, it? how hard is it to dodge all that? Cause you are, you know, you still in your prime. You, you're not even, you haven't even entered your prime. You're nowhere near it yet. So you still living life right now at the same right. time of training. I feel like managing everything could be hard at, was hard at first, you know, cause like I say, everybody, it's like it's like being a pan almost with your friends. So it's like it's hard at first, but then once you do it, it's like all eyes on you. You gotta you gotta do what's right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta lead or if you do this, they're gonna do that. So you know what I'm saying? You yeah. gotta all eyes on you, you gotta you gotta come in and do the right thing. What's your GPA, bro? Uh it's like two point eight or something like that. It's okay. not it it came it it rose drastically. Like my like I said, my freshman or sophomore year. I was I was goofing around. I was that little that little freshman that was five five wasn't on varsity yet. Then, like I said, I changed I changed him around when I, when I, when I needed to. You know what I'm saying? Got to get in those books, brother. You got to get in those books. Definitely got to stay. Get fo- in. Honestly, we doing football cool. 
But you got it. The most important thing is those books, bro. Yes, sir. That's the most important thing. Like beyond all that, you got a good head on your shoulders. Get that GPA up. Mm-hmm. Probably, you know, try to get it be uh, beyond that, man. Look, be around. You know, you you an athlete and you smart. So find some people that's smarter than you, bro, and learn from them. Like, yo, uh, I want to be your friend. Find different friends. Like you can have the same friends, but find very stupid, intelligent friends that's there. What's your GPA? You know what? I you know be competitive that way as well. It's, you know right. what I'm saying? Like for sure. Yeah, are you are you a competitor? Are you a competitor? Cause like they said, Michael Jordan. I, Michael Jordan was so fierce of a competitor. He would stay up all night for paper how shoots. The, how the hell you he get an A plus? And I, he I didn't give a. I'd be damned if you got an yeah. A plus. And I <laughs> get one. You hear me? We'll be doing yeah. it. We'll be taking a test next week. You okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, how competitive are you in the game, and how competitive are you outside of the game? I think I'm I'm really competitive. A lot of people say I'm too competitive. Like I will be in PE or something, and I'm I'm already sweating like everybody else, just, just shooting around. You know, they're like, "Why are you going so hard?" And I want to win in everything I do. I feel like if if, if, I, if I win in everything, can't nobody sit on the bottom. You know what I'm saying? If you playing around and you lose one on one to a bomb, they're gonna say, "Oh, you lost." Like I, you can't say you're playing around when it, when everybody looking at you. So you gotta. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you if you're competitive and want to win everywhere and every every category of life and can't lose. Absolutely. That, talk that, to those teachers, man. Is. You know, ask them how can I get my, you know, how can I get a better grade? I need an A plus out of it. What do I have to do? If you don't know something, let them know you don't know it, brother. Yeah, definitely. You got to reach for out real, for help, man. man. You know, closed mouths don't get fed. You have to reach out for help, no doubt. Um, like I said, so do you consider well, do you rely more on your athleticism or do you rely more on your IQ to get you past when you're going through games? When you're at that point in the third or fourth quarter where you're too tired and you, you know, you might not be running routes as fast as you was, are you waiting to try to get a time out or try to gain some more energy? Or are you relying on your IQ and your knowledge of the game to push you through? Definitely my IQ and my knowledge of the game. Like you said, that's what the film for, you know what I'm saying? You know, third quarter, fourth quarter, that's when everybody else tired. That's where mm-hmm. those extra reps come in. You know, you know, this guy can't play the whole game. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that then IQ and knowledge, it, it goes a long way. All right, man. Uh, give them your Instagram, man. You know, pub yourself. So you tell them where That's to reach you at and, you know, everything. My Instagram is Trey AXT. It's T R E A X T. My Twitter is Barnum Latrell. B O N N E R L A T R E L L. Now you play the game? Yes, sir. <laughs> you on 2K or anything like that? Uh, most definitely. Okay, well, listen, you listen. You, you, you uh, let know PS, what, PS4? PS4, you ask Box. Yeah. I'm Xbox. Okay, ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. What's your Put game you, attack, yeah, man? Yeah, let your game, let the people know your game attack. They might want to be trying to get in on that. My game attack is Trey, T-R-E, and then T-W-F. Okay, before right. we get out of here, man, I got one more question for you. If they gave you all the money in the world right now, what would you spend it on? Uh, I, I invest in a few businesses. Mm. I want to make my money make more money. Okay. What do you think we can do as a people to try to help ourselves in the situation that we're in? Oh, we gotta come start off by coming together. Like you said, it ain't just gonna, it ain't gonna change tomorrow. It ain't gonna change a month from now, not even a year from now. So I feel like we all work together and you know what I'm saying, game plan. We can make a change for the, the next generation to come. Now, do you say your parents have a huge influence on your life or is your mom and your dad? Most definitely. Mm-hmm. How long have they been together? Going back to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Keeping love alive, man. Listen, we're going to let you get out of here and go ahead and continue your day. Yeah. Listen, keep training, man. Stay focused. And like I said, if all else fails, don't worry about it. Somebody from my Steelers organization will be hitting you up. We'll be looking for it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Everything from the area, man. Keep working. Stay focused, man. And don't let them hold you down. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, brother. Take it easy, man. Gotta go.